Hello, morning, welcome again to this glorious day where again we take and go on an endless journey of learning and understanding the dance grades and how Indian dance progressed. While there was major dance activity in much of India and major ports and capital cities, Madras, Calcutta, Delhi, Bombay, Cochin, Central India remained parched for art and culture, though having many folk and local forms. It was left to Shanti and Gulbardhan to create the Rangashri Little Ballet Troupe in 1952 at Bhopal. Shanti Bardhan pioneered this form of ballet in India, which used human puppets, masks, dance, movement and music as part of one performance, a form he inherited from the legendary Uday Shankar. Under a long colonial rule from 16th to 20th century ADE, most of these forms suffered from lack of patronage under the colonial rule, especially of the Britishers whose Victorian ways and prudish nature did not permit an open celebration of the body and its spirit and who also looked down upon local traditional cultures and did all to discourage it. Lord Macaulay, a certain British Viceroy, further killed traditional arts by delinking culture from education in schools. Thus, traditional disciplines like yoga, reading of Sanskrit scriptures and classical music and dance were given a go-by. Local patronage by Indian chieftains and royalty assured some survival and continuity in certain pockets. Else, most of these traditions would have been lost. In that, the role of local temples as cradle of culture cannot be underestimated and local nobility supported these temples, thus indirectly these dances got supported. The work of few pioneering gurus and visitors from abroad also helped these forms get established. The arrival of non-European artists to India at the turn of the 20th century also proved to be a catalyst. Among these, mention can be made of Ruth St. Denis and Ted Sean, pioneering American dancer, Anna Pavlova and Victor Dandre, Russian star performers, La Mary and Ragini Devi, enterprising American dancers, Louis Lightfoot, Australian talent and many others, they saw the dismal condition of Indian dances, submerged under long alien rule of 400 years and felt sad for these century-old traditions. Dutch writers like Beryl de Zote and French and Italian travellers like Alain Denlo and Travernier wrote their observations that helped too. The foreign dancers took samples of these forms and helped create a flavour of these dances through their own interpretations, thus giving Indian dances a worldwide audiences and assured survival. These were in form of short items or Hindu dances with popular imagery. They also discovered new partners and thus created stars of the form. Thus Anna Pavlova discovered and partnered Uday Shankar, who was to become father of modern Indian dance. Later, La Mary discovered and partnered Ram Gopal, who was to become king of classical forms. And Ragni Devi discovered and partnered Gopinath, who was to take Kathakali abroad. Ditto Louis Lightfoot and Anand Shivaram. These foreigners helped reinstate Indian dance art and such activities got augmented by the slow and steady growth of nationalist fervour in pre-independence era, when Indians got inspired to fight foreign rule under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, later joined by Sadar Patel, Jawaharlal Nehru, Maulana Azad and many more. In that period, several regional and new institutions were created for revival teaching and promotion of our dance forms, chief being Kerala Kalamandalam in 1930s in Kerala to teach Kerala arts of Kathakali and Mohiniyattam, Kalakshetra in Madras in 1940s to teach Bharatanatyam and Tagore's own Santani Ketan in 1930s to teach Manipuri, Kathakali and all available forms. Once India became independent in 1947, lots of forms got a shot in the arm, as it were, and overnight, under the overall nationalist fervour and spirit of revival, many institutions were created that helped teach and train new adherents. 
in Delhi, an enlightened industrialist family created the Bharati Kala Kendra, which also housed the Katha Kendra, Natya and Ballet Center, the Delhi Ballet Center, and a host of institutions came up all over the country, too many to recount here. The first generation of star dancers India produced are Uday Shankar, whose discovery by Anne Pavlova sparked a creative partnership in London and Paris. Soon, Shankar returned to India to set up his own dance company and engage many, including musicians like Alauddin Khan Sahib, Timir Baran and Vishnu Das Shirali to create everlasting works. His younger brother Ravi Shankar distinguished himself later as a world-class sitarist. His works gained quick recognition due to unique interplay and the use of many mediums. His dancers were well trained, but he also understood scenography. Shanti Bardhan was one such age disciple or product of Dada Uday Shankar. He was well groomed for larger role on world of Indian dance drama, popularly called ballet then. This definition partook of western word then used for spectacles and dance dramas and thus we got our definitions from west before independence. Shanti Bardhan ushered in a new era of Indian ballets by the elements of sense. At times, it is rather as if Walt Disney had been influenced by Ajanta Frescoes, noted Financial Times, London. Mr. Shanti Bardhan's strength lies in his conception of the ballets as a composite India art which music, dancing and painting has equal share, a total work of art, said the statesman New Delhi. Children are the best judges, Shanti Bardhan, choreographer and founder of Little Ballet Troupe, often used to say. And before good ballet, all men are children. He was specially trained in the Manipuri and Tipperton school, to which he developed 12 years of study. A gifted dancer, he was also acquainted with several other classical and folk forms. Six years at the Uday Shankar Cultural Centre at Almora prepared him for the path he was to tread. Though Almora closed down due to personality traits of so many artists, those who learnt there, Narendra Sharma or Shanti Bardhan, Sachin Shankar or Kameshwar, all benefited immensely. This experience taught them how to produce ballets, how to make costumes, do lights, undertake different roles and characters and create wholesome productions. Thus equipped, from 1944 onwards, he progressed from dancer to choreographer and created ballets on many things. Bhuka Hai Bengal, The Spirit of India, India Immortal and The Discovery of India created a profound impression and established his place amongst those responsible for the renaissance of the theatre arts of India. A maturer vision was evident in the choreography of scenes from the Ramayana and Panch Tantra. In the choreography of these ballets, he combined the elements of dance, drama, opera and music to create something that was traditional and yet had contemporary significance and appeal. His early death in 1954 was a tragic loss to the contemporary movement in Indian dance. His wife then teamed up with Prabhat Ganguly, who had taken over as lead artist and was also close to Gulbardhan. Together they created much, but Shanti Bardhan was the founding father and his work is a source of joy to all and inspiration to artists. He lives on in the work of Rangasri, Little Ballet Troupe. Gulbardhan was a cigarette smoking, lungi wearing modern woman of her times. She looked sickly and pale due to chain smoking but did not deter her stamina or determination. In long conversations with Runa Chakravarti, Harmony Magazine 2006 and Mohan Koker in 1960s, Gulbardhan codified and confided how it seems like yesterday that my late husband Shanti Bardhan founded the Rangashi Little Ballet Troupe in Bhopal. In fact, it was 1952, we made music, composed ballets, worked on a new dance form, using human puppets and traveled far and wide to learn urban folk and traditional dances. She fraught with difficulties and come from Mumbai-based Gujarati family. I was the youngest daughter and had a brother and two sisters. While strong political ideologies fired the patriot in us, my father Hans Raj Shah worked for Congress. Our mother would play the Dilruba, a stringed instrument crossed between sitar and sarangi, and encourage us to appreciate the arts. I took the plunge when I saw Shanti Das, Shanti Bardhan's ballet, Bhuka Hai Bengal, based on the Bengal famine. 
Shantida was trained in Manipuri and Tipura, a dance form from Tripura, and performed with the late Uday Shankar at his cultural center in Almora. The center disbanded later and Shantida chose to redefine Shankar's choreography. His projection of modern day melodies had an impact on me and I joined his group in 1945. Those were the student days, grueling practice from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., no Sundays or holidays. I first performed in 1946 in the ballet India Immortal, which spoke about the destruction of India's golden period with British rule. It was created by students and choreographed by Shanti Da. Pandit Ravi Shankar composed its music. We went on an all India tour and Jawala Nehru watched us perform. She recalls with gleeful this theme. In 1947, Shanti Da, under the banner of Indian Renaissance Group, choreographed the ballet Discovery of India based on Pandit Nehru's book. Financial constraints impeded its progress and Shantida developed tuberculosis. But I convinced him to start work again. The Little Ballet Troupe was established the following year with support from like-minded people. We started working on a ballet based on Ramayan using human puppets. There was so much to be done, costumes, masks, musical instruments, and we had to make the materials ourselves. In 1953, for the first time, the Little Ballet performed in Mumbai. By then, dance had become a common bond for Shantida and me, and we married in 1953, just a year before he died. To ensure the success of the show, I arranged a Sarod performance by Ustad Ali Akbar Khan and three short dance performances. We collected about rupees 2000, which helped us purchase costumes and musical instruments for Ramayan. That was a turning point, and it turned out to be a huge success. The troupe has around 20 members today and its repertoire comprises 36 full-length ballets, Manipuri, Mayurubhanj and Saraikala Chow dances and short dance members. In 1964, it shifted from Mumbai to Gwalior and reconstituted itself as Rangasri Little Ballet Troupe with provisions to impart training too. In 1984, Rangasri Little Ballet Troupe shifted to Bhopal. The state government allotted us land to construct our own building called Gulbardhan to Runa Chakravarti. Discovery of India became a popular ballet. When a debonair and handsome Prabhat Ganguly appeared on out of magic boxes of playing cards, he made for a striking entry. Dressed up in red and white as per colonial master's costumation, he looked every Brit a British master whipping poverty-stricken natives of India into shape. He looked akin to a ringmaster with colonial ringmasters were. Prabhat was tall and broad-built with many women falling for him. Prabhat came in handy because he was good at many things. This Discovery of India production thus got wings to travel. Those days when artists created themes or works based on political personages, they naturally won approval and political patronage. Both artists and politicians are generally given to flattery and a vein. Thus, under the Nehruvian era, this work based on Nehru's writing was immediately promoted by minions of Shastri Bhavan in Delhi who knew how to please political bosses. Junior officers of cultural and education ministries used these ballets and productions to win favours from the government in power. It was pretty common sight, then as now, to see babus and artists playing up to political bosses. <coughs> Looking back at Shantida and his work, it is clear that there was an artist who was first and foremost fired by social commitment. Whether in his first attempt of dance drama, Bhuka Bangal, or Immortal India or Discovery of India, then the aesthetic exploration of the finer nuances of an aesthetic form and technique. In this respect, he was perhaps quite distinct. But no artist can express powerfully and communicate satisfactorily if he was not in command of the tools of his artistic medium. Shantida combined the fairy spirit with a dogged, diligent training in the Tiphara and the Manipuri and Udishankar styles. 
he was innate, innately innovative not because he was intellectually breaking away from a classical idiom or trying to initiate a reform movement, but because his search was genuine and authentic and mastery of his body complete and he retained the childlike spontaneity of looking at the world around him. This made it possible for him to thaw upon all resources and any experience effortlessly. He was eclectic and iconoclastic as if this was his natural self. Delhi's cultural life was limited to the Wavell Theatre and the Regal Theatre. It was both ironical and significant that immortal India, the first attempt at re-articulation of identity, should be presented at Wavell Theatre, the symbol not only of imperial power but also of the presence of British at that time, British and US troops. I recall all too vividly the first entry of a lead, slim, shining, dark brown skin, rich curly hair, but powerful muscular upper limbs and an intensity of primeval virility in the open demi-ply in that scene of Dravidian snake worship. No doubt this was a group dance, but one dancer dominated the presentation. This was Shanti Bardhan. I watched this ballet star dance drama. It was this dancer who occupied stage plain and moved in both theatrical space and narrative dying of the history of India. There were others, especially Narendra Sharma and Sachin, the robust fluidity of their movements, the lyricism of delivery was charming. Shantida's dance emerged as an inner trance body energy. The first dialogue took place with him, then immortal India had broken fresh grounds and for us, the mistiness of oriental dance had cleaned to show new horizon of new vigor, vitality and vocabulary. The new encounter was the transformation of immortal India to the presentation of the discovery of India on the oration, rather really Asian Relations Conference. Damu in an article recounts Kamala Devi's initiative and the history of presentation of this ballet and Jawaharlal's spontaneous response after the show. The ballet is better than my book. As a volunteer at the Asian Relations Conference and as helper at Regal Theatre where this was presented once again, it was Shanti Ida who moved with the quickness of lightning in the ballet equal only to Prabhat Ganguly who towered as both Buddha and British explorer. Forty years later, these happenings appear as if they were normal and perhaps only one other attempt of using a text for visual kinetic presentation. The matches for new themes, new forms. The motivation of both Immortal India and Discovery of India was a search for an Indian identity and a deeper commitment to memo of Indian freedom. At that moment and in that time and space, the ballets had an electrifying effect on other generation and their impact was beyond that of an aesthetical pleasurable evening. When Shantida passed away in 1954, rehearsals of the ballet Panchatantra were in progress. It was tough to carry on and I was disillusioned. Almost fortuitously, through good office of our biggest dance friend and supporter, Mohan Khokar and Sangeet Natak Academy which he represented, Pandit Nehru sent a message through his daughter Indra saying he wanted to meet me. When I told him I was thinking of disbanding the group, he talked me out of it and assured me that money would not be an obstacle. The next day I received a check and work on Panchatantra continued. Nehru attended the performance when it was staged in Delhi and continued to be there to encourage us. Prabhat Ganguly, an old associate of Shantida, joined troop in 1959 and infused a new vigor. He remained chief choreographer for more than 40 years. He had the rare ability to create a ballet on any subject, even a pebble or a leaf. Age has little to do with what and what you want to do in life. I continue to dance and help my troupe with shows as best as I can. I also love to read. Over the years, I have collected books on diverse subjects. Currently, I am reading Natya Shastra. I have also edited a book, Rhythm Incarnate based on work and life of Shantida. I have choreographed ballets like 
Uttar Priyadarshri and Mahabharat and intend to choreograph a ballet on volcanoes. Being the secretary of Rangashri means a lot of administrative work too. These days, I only perform for Ramayana and Panchatantra, but still practice for about five to six hours a day. By God's grace, I'm on the right side of health, and the only thing that bothers me is my hearing impairment. After dancing, flower arrangement takes up a great deal of my time. I believe it is up to every individual to decide what they want from life. I have decided what I want from mine said Golbardhan. The group has repertory of 36 full-length ballets and number of smaller play pieces like Sarikala Chao, Mayabun Chao, India Mortal, Uttar Priya Darshani, Mahabharat, etc. and include ballets she has choreographed. She has edited a book, Rhythm Incarnate, published by Abhina Publications, New Delhi. The Rangashri Little Ballet Troupe has staged shows all over the world, awards from several countries including the Sangeet Natak Academy Award and Madhya Pradesh Shikhar Saman in 2001 have followed. Today, Gul is gone too and the group valiantly continues the mission impossible.